Okay, so I'll just get past Mr. Thurrett's business there. Uh, so in the real-time rendering learning material here, uh, what I've done is just launched these three. So there's a little quiz, uh, the assignment instructions and the submission portal. Okay, so the, the assignment instructions are fairly extensive, but I'm going to fill that with the videos that we're just about to film. I did my dry run with the previous group, uh, made a couple of boo-boos, so I'll not be using that video, so hopefully I don't muck things up with this one, and uh, it uh, all works a bit better. Okay, so what we'll do, I'll just show you how the instructions are kind of set out. So it's it kind of a multiple component to this. There's a there's an AutoCAD aspect, which is about getting these these kind of sculptural forms facing the right way, getting them tipped up and turned round. There's a very small 3D Studio component, and that is just to to get materials, a material onto all of the objects at the same time, and then export those from 3D Studio as a specific file type, which Twin Motion is happier to work with. So we're looking to, looking to get it to the FBX output format. Okay, so the instructions take you through the AutoCAD part. I'm going to film this anyway. I'll film me doing it so you can follow the video along. Uh, a very small 3D Studio component, and then the bigger component is in Twin Motion, where we're adding, we're, we're bringing in a model that's already made. So there's no modeling per se. Uh, setting up the background, modifying the materials that you can see for for better looking ones adding materials to the groundscape so we want grass and gravel and roads and things and then adding vegetation um, and finally vegetation scatters which are a bit riskier uh, okay but then we pull in the the model of the sculptures and basically generate a couple of views from that so I will take you through that now so firstly we start off with with these handsy characters so rather than people kind of go off trying to find sculptures and things and uh, it can it can get a bit annoying trying to track down three versions of something um, I thought this might be easier just to pick three of these animal handsy figures uh, which are already modeled we just need to tip them up okay Hansies are it's a what's called a logo graphic writing system um, and you know it's a bit like runes like Nordic runes you know it's it's not using a, a an alphabet as such it represents the 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 objects or the the feelings or whatever with a with a character instead and, and this dates back to about they think about 4,000 years old is the is the first kind of objects that they found that had Hansies carved onto them and uh, I've got a picture of uh, where are they it's here they are these are these are the very first objects that they found with with Hansie uh, on them and these these are like a fortune telling bones so they just kind of shake them and throw them on the floor and the way they land is you know gonna say whether you 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 your baby's going to live or you know the harvest is going to be good and these kind of things so all a bit all a bit archaic but uh, you know this was quite a long time ago and uh, you know over the centuries uh, the number of characters has grown to about 3000 that they have now uh, so it's it's quite some language um, and you know up till about the 1700s there was half, more than half of the world's printed material was written using Chinese characters. Um, it wasn't until the printing presses were invented in Europe that things kind of changed and there was more written in the languages that we kind of see and understand. But anyway, so the idea is that we, we choose three of these and manipulate them in AutoCAD. So you download this file and unzip it and then we get stuck in, in AutoCAD. So let's just launch 
AutoCAD. So if you have any animal preferences, you know, now's a good time to learn the Hansi symbol for them. So I'm going to open, firstly open one of them, and this becomes kind of the base file for everybody, for the others. Okay, let's go with a scorpion. That sounds kind of a bit scary. Okay, now it's, it's shaded at the moment. I'm just going to put it shaded with edges so I can see a bit more form. And the idea is to tip this up so it's standing up. Okay, so use your 3D modeling workspace. Okay, and then you can access the UCS controls and we would need the right or the left one to be able to rotate it the correct way. So let's use the right coordinate system. Okay, then rotate, grab everything, enter, use your object snaps and pick a point somewhere at the bottom of the character. Okay, and then the rotation angle would be a positive 90. You could put ortho on and just drag and that will give you the same or you can type in 90 and enter. Okay now we need to kind of push that out the way because we're going to bring in the other characters at 0, 0. So move, grab the character, enter, base point anywhere with ortho on so you don't go down or up. We just keep it and just slide it back. Okay, so now we want to open two other files. Okay, so let's go for the pheasant. That sounds good. Okay. Okay, and similarly, shady the edges. So what we do here is keep things in the world coordinate system, but do the special copy and paste. So it's shift control C pick a point near the bottom of the character, grab it all, enter. Go back to the first file, and this is where we need to change the UCS to be the front coordinate system. Okay, then when we bring in the next character, it'll be sitting in the same alignment as this one. So you change it to front, shift control V, Okay, I'm just going to do that again, shift Control v that's better, it's free now, and type in 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, enter. Okay, now move that one back. Okay, notice I only had to pick it in a single place because it's a block at the moment. This one's in bits, this one's a block. Okay, I've finished with the pheasant. Don't save the changes. Open another animal. Spider, yeah. Okay. Shade it with edges. Okay. Sh Shift Control C. Try that again. Shift Control C, that's better. Base point. Anywhere along the bottom here grab everything, enter, go back to my original file, shift control V, 0, 0, 0. Okay, we'll finish with the spider, no need to save changes, but this file now, I'm going to save this as cluster. So save as a drawing, and I'll pop this on my desktop, and I'm just going to save over the version that was there before. There should be a file called cluster there. Mm, there it is, cluster. So we'll just save over the top of that one. Okay, now remember these two are blocks and this one's individual. So we explode these two just once. So it's X, enter, pick, pick, enter. So this is now in bits as well. Okay, 3D Studio doesn't like dealing with blocks, prefers these to be just individual items. 
okay now if we if we were making this you know as a real sculpture sculpture then something like this would fall over you know imagine if we kind of built it then there's a chance that you know, that's going to fall over okay so what we'll do is we'll we'll create a plastic kind of a plastic screen in in the center of it something to keep it all together you know bits like this are hovering in midair at the moment we can't really do that so we need something to keep them together so we change now back to the world coordinate system and do plan and enter twice okay I don't need to be in the shaded view so just 2d wireframe will do and I'm going to zoom in on one of them and create a rectangle that's going right the way through the middle it doesn't have to be a thick object so something like that could do with being a little bit bigger that one I'm just going to stretch it out a bit more okay then copy that onto the other two so we just copy it so we've got the same size of kind of central board central panel for all three of them okay now we'll go into a 3d view so you can use this or orbit or shift and middle mouse okay let's sit like that and we want this to appear as if it's coming out of the ground okay so let's move them move all three down slightly so move pick one two three enter ortho on base point can be anywhere we'll just go down around about 300 millimeters there okay so that's underneath them now and then we can extrude that this is where I do need to see it a bit more solid and we'll extrude all three so they they come through above the highest part of the sculpture Okay, so remember this is going to be a, maybe a glass or a plastic material, so we'll see through it. So we're just going to bring it above the the object. Okay, so they look a bit like printing blocks now with the with the kind of backing board. Okay, now we need we need later on we want to assign different colours to each of these, so we do need some new layers to help us do that so we need a bit of layer creation here I'm not sure where layer X came from I didn't create it, it must have been inside one of the wee blocks already but anyway create th six new layers uh, actually I could use that one, I may as well use it as soon as it's there okay so let's say this one I'm gonna call it S1 so it's sculpture 1, sculpture 2, sculpture 3 and then plane or panel one so P1 I'll use caps P1 let me rename that please it's just jammed there okay P2 and this one will rename to P3 if it lets me there we go P3 okay sort them out by name Okay, so sculptures, let's give them the different colours so we can actually see them. So let's go 240, okay, 160, and 102. Okay, and then a kind of complementary but lighter shade. Okay, so P1, let's make this 241, P2, 161 and P3 101 okay so we've got our layers ready to go right so let's say this is P1 this one P2 this one P3 okay this is sculpture 1 sculpture 2 Sculpture 3. Cool. So we've got control over this later on when it ends up in twin motion now because each object has got its own name. 
Okay, the organization is a little bit messy. Let's let's make things a bit easier for ourselves. We may as well do this in AutoCAD. So if we look down on it again, so it's plan and enter twice. Okay, I'm gonna leave the green one where it is. I'll rotate the blue one by 120 degrees. 120. Let's just move it away from the red one just for a second. Okay, let's rotate the red one by negative 120. Okay, and then we can just put those into like a cluster so we've got a bit of space in the middle. Now those, those angles are intentional so that if you were stood in the middle of the cluster these characters read correctly. If you were stood outside the cluster this one wouldn't read correctly but you'd see this one and this one correct. Okay, does that make sense? If you stood here you wouldn't see this one correct but you would see that one and that one. Okay, because the handsy, you know, it's not like the letter A, which looks the same front and back. You know, they do only have a front side to them. Most of our letters are the same. We can't, you can't read the letter K backwards. We don't have that. Okay, so that's the that's the model ready to go to 3D Studio. So all we need to do there is just save that. Okay, and now we can move on to the 3D Studio portion, 